welcome to the Double Helix Ranch. I'll give you a little tour today. Unfortunately, it's somewhat windy, so we may have quite a bit of wind noise in these videos. I apologize for that. Um, I'll do the best I can and give you an idea of what the ranch looks like. Ann and I have owned the Double Helix for about a quarter of a century, and uh, I've been living out here pretty much full time during the COVID epidemic, working remotely. And um, the goal of the Double Helix has been to uh, become as self-sufficient as possible, so we produce virtually all of our own food, our own meat, vegetables, and fruits, and we also um, trying to restore the land, uh, bring back some of the native plants and animals that have disappeared locally, and bring it back to its uh, its former beauty. This is the solar array for the ranch. It's our electric system that produces all the electricity we use on the ranch. Extends to the far side of that roof over there. Consists of 66 solar panels, and it produces more electricity than we actually need on the ranch to run all the houses and outbuildings and wells, and even run our charge our electric vehicles. Um, so we feed the excess electricity back into the grid for for others to use. These are the control units for our solar power system, the various inverters that invert the DC solar power into AC power and uh, either feed it back to the grid or they feed it into our houses and the rest of the ranch for use. And then if we have excess power, we store it in this uh, very large battery system. This is a lithium phosphate iron battery system, one of the more new technologies. And then uh, if the grid goes down and the sun's not shining, then we can draw power out of the battery system. One thing you have to think about if you're going to be self-sufficient is where your water comes from. Uh, we have several wells that we have drilled to, uh, to get our water and, and they're solar power just like the rest of the ranch. So we have solar panels that power the individual wells as well as uh, having central power to distribute water around the ranch. We have some wells that are used for irrigation and for the cattle and others that supply water to our, our household. We're now in my garden that produces most of our fresh vegetable needs for the ranch. So these are um, broccoli and cauliflower and Brussels sprouts and kohlrabi, uh, various herbs, um, salad greens, lettuce, spinach, and so on. There's some just coming up, some uh, various kinds of squash and cucumbers. And over here we've got some uh, more squash and some various herbs and then tomatoes, lots of tomatoes and onions. And the garden produces uh, enough vegetables to, to keep us um, completely uh, in fresh vegetables for most of the year. For fresh fruit, I've planted about 70 different kinds of fruit trees at the Double Helix Ranch. And so we get fresh fruit from May to December and we have uh, pears and Asian pear apples and apples and pomegranates, persimmons, figs, peaches, plums, apricots, plumcots, pluries, and uh, probably several other different kinds of fruits that I've forgotten to mention. But um, they are uh, all producing very well for us now. One thing that I've learned to do during COVID is to cure and prepare meats without the use of refrigeration. Now, these are hams that are cold smoked and been cured and can be stored at room temperature. These are made from our local feral hog population. We've got lots of feral hogs on the Double Helix Ranch. So we use those to make these delicious hams. This is similar to the style of hams that you might find in Spain, jamón ibérico or you also might be familiar with the country hams of the southeastern United States. And they can be stored like this without any refrigeration for, for quite a long time. And then you can slice them thin. They're delicious eaten uh, straight or as with ham and biscuits, or you can make chunks of the ham and use it in cooking all kinds of delicious vegetables. Ann and I both drive electric cars now and we have an electric uh, four-wheel drive ranch vehicle as well 
So those are all powered from our solar power system. So we're completely independent of um, using gasoline for our travel needs now. We rely entirely on traveling by, uh, by solar power, driving with the sun. This is our ranch fire truck. Um, it was originally a fire truck used by Burnett, Texas, uh, city of Burnett, and they got a new fire truck after 9-11. So we bought the old one and, and refurbished it and uh, put on a new pump system. And so we now have new pumps and fire hoses that we can use to fight wildfires. And it, uh, it worked great. We have a volunteer fire department here at the ranch consisting of our friends and relatives. And then for a water source, I capture water off the rooftops of all of our buildings into these large tanks. And I can fill up the fire truck just about any place on the ranch in a moment's notice. And we can use that to fight wildfires, which we've done a few times. This is the real workhorse of the ranch, the, our skid steer that I use to build ponds and to cut firewood and to um, clear brush and all kinds of other kind of projects, uh, dig trenches. Um, it's a very useful device that really helps us out. It's one of the few machines on the ranch that doesn't run on electric power. It uh, has to be diesel powered, but um, maybe eventually they'll come out with uh, electric versions of these, uh, of these heavy ranch machines. We have several dozen adult longhorns on the ranch. This is our herd sire, Cinco de Mayo. So no name because that's the, when he was born, on the 5th of May. And uh, he's a very gentle bull, uh, very easy going. And it's a good thing because you can see they have very long horns that they can use to defend themselves when necessary. They use those horns to defend against uh, predators. So I have very little trouble keeping the herd safe from uh, predators like uh, coyotes or mountain lions that might otherwise bother the cattle on the ranch um, and he has uh, he looks over a herd of about uh, two dozen cows longhorns come in lots of different colors uh, this black and white lineback longhorn is named Negra Modelo um, so all longhorns are not necessarily orange and white despite what some people think my longhorn cows. This is D.H. Shonuff. I particularly like her because you can see she has this uh, longhorn blaze on her head, uh, right on her forehead. It looks basically just like a Texas longhorn. And then of course she is a Texas longhorn. So you can see her beautiful long twisty horns that kind of exemplify the kind of, of horn and configuration that, that I like to raise longhorns on our ranch. No to freeze. In another month or so, the ranch will be covered in wildflowers. It's a bit early yet this year, and it's been quite dry and cold, and so we don't have a whole lot blooming yet. Um, these claret cup cactus is, uh, is, is in bloom, however. This is uh, one of the pretty species of cactus blooms. This particular one is pollinated by hummingbirds, and hence it has bright red flowers. These are our chicken eggs. They're all different pretty colors of blue, pink, and brown. They produce delicious eggs. We produce all our eggs here at the Double Helix Ranch. And they are absolutely delicious. This is the brand of the Double Helix Ranch, obviously based on a DNA molecule. And uh, we use it to freeze brand our cattle as well as to mark various other aspects of the property on the ranch. We have two main houses at the Double Helix Ranch. This is the house that Ann and I live in. 
And then if I pan around, you can see our guest house, also known as the Writer's Retreat. And uh, the Writer's Retreat is, uh, is used as a place where writers can come and work on residence and on writing books. So we've had lots of famous authors, Amy Tan and lots of natural history authors have stayed at the Writer's Retreat and, and written great works of literature. Okay, we're now inside the Writer's Retreat, and as you can see, Ann and I are both kind of bibliophiles, so we've got lots of books, especially about natural history and things about Texas, and so we've got a great library for authors to use if they stay here and, and write about, uh, especially about those subjects. Here's a quick tour of our outdoor kitchen that we use for cooking most of our meals during warmer months of the year. Um, we do a lot of cooking either on the, the fireplace or in the fire pit. Um, we also have a pizza oven or a range shop. And it's beautiful out here at night, and uh, especially if you cook and eat around the fire, around the fire pit. It's a lovely place to sit and listen to the coyotes howl. I like to collect skulls of animals, and so in the writer's retreat, you'll also see it's decorated with kind of a a skull theme, lots of different interesting skulls of different kinds of animals, especially in different mammals. And uh, uh, that's kind of an entertaining aspect of the decor inside the writer's retreat. Yeah, we'll walk on by Mountain Shadow here and see if we can walk down to the creek so you can get an idea of what the, uh, some of the terrain looks like on the double helix. See lots of quartz on the ground. It's the central Texas mineral region. And so um, it's known as an uh, area of lots of gemstones. You can find Texas blue topaz and um, you can find quartz crystals and fluorite crystals and star sapphires and tourmaline and uh, iron pyrite, other minerals in the area that a lot of people like to come and seek out. And then you can see one of our, uh, this is known as the major groove of the double helix. Those biologists in the audience will kind of understand that reference. Uh, one of the big cascades that runs through the ranch and can be quite beautiful when the water's running. Right now it's been really a drought and so it's mostly dry except for scattered pools of water. The primary rocks of the double helix are uh, gneiss, which is metamorphosized granite, been transformed under intense heat and pressure um, back about 1.1 billion years ago. And then the gneiss cracked, and uh, in the cracks there were intrusions, other kind of crystals formed, those are called pegmatites. So here you can see some pegmatites of quartz, and uh, a black mineral that's known as ilmenite, um, ilmenite is a titanium oxide. It's a primary ore of titanium. We have lots of great rock outcrops on the ranch. I'll try to walk up on here and give you an idea of what it looks like. Um, we've got beautiful vistas. Uh, you can see for miles and miles around. And um, our nearest neighbors are miles away, so we're pretty isolated out here on the ranch, except for all of the beautiful animals and plants and, and, uh, and rocks. You can see a lot of the rocks are covered in very pretty lichens. And as I get up here on the top, you can look out. I just see a couple of vultures flying away from up here as we get to the top. Probably nesting up here in the rocks. And you can kind of take a look for the at the views we get. You get up high see for miles and miles. It's a smoothing iron mountain in the very distant background there. And that's kind of what the territory of our ranch looks like.
I hope you've really enjoyed your uh, tour of the Double Helix Ranch in the heart of the Texas Hill Country. And I hope you can spend some time while you're at the university really enjoying this beautiful part of the world. Come and visit us. We've enjoyed the tour. I hope you have too.